Would you believe me if I told you that these three things are mathematically related? Yes, you should. Let me dive into an adventure full of economy, games and topology with you. First, I want to start with a problem. A really common problem that exists in every stock market and even when you buy coconuts from your market. Yes, what I'm talking about is general equilibrium. If you're not into economics, you might think, wow, what a fancy name. Indeed, it's actually really awesome, but let me explain. It's quite simple. First, a story, then the theory. Imagine two people. In fact, you don't need to. They are right here. Okay, Alice has apples and Bob has bananas. Each person has an utility function for these products. The value of one pack of toilet paper you buy from your market and 20 packs of toilet paper per unit is not the same. The higher the number, the less your spec you show it. The graph naturally goes like this. I want to present the utility function with exponential parameters between 0 and 1. That utility function is named Cop Douglas production function. The ones in parentheses between A is presenting how many apples and bananas Alice have, and the ones in parentheses between B is presenting how many apples and bananas Bob have. In that way, we can calculate utilities for different allegations. Also, working with exponential makes our work easier when we are working with differential equations later on. When we draw the utility functions of Alice and Bob, we can see that at a certain point, it might be more rational to trade apples and bananas. But here, the question arises. Is there any trading point that makes everyone happy? Is it really possible? We need to come up with something clever to answer that question. That's where a trick that involves using algebra to calculate discriminant comes in. We need to use the secret K. Vector. Let's describe our possible and feasible trades with a vector. We need to put our vectors in same space, right? They can just stand in emptiness. Okay, we need to put these vectors in a box that includes all feasible allocations. That box is called the edge word box. In that box, our total supply is conserved. Conservation of energy shall not be violated! The two corners are for Alice and Bob's origin, the X axis for apples, and the Y axis is for bananas. We can represent the allocations as points, and our vectors are for trade. This sounds great, right? All physics take a deep breath. Yes, we have a field, like a magnetic field. Don't be shy. If you're somewhere really interested in physics, I am really interested too. These vectors are going to be shaped by the utilities of the supplies. But it looks like this. As the utility function changes, our vectors are going to change. At the start, I mentioned the point where everyone is happy. That point is the zero vector. You can see that point is in this example, but this is just an example. We need a theory that will always work. That's where the Brouwer's fixed point comes. It's a theory that says, when we change particles in a disk continuously, there will always be a particle whose location is not changed. If you don't know topology, you might hear that sentence as farting, or you might have created a function like that and said, no, I have changed every point. It is not a disk. But it seems like a disk. No. But I am here for this. A really common physical example of the fixed point theorem is when you mix a cup of coffee. We think that the topmost molecules remain in the same layer. There is always at least one fixed point. It seems pretty rational when you consider variations like that. But proof? We need a proof, man. I want to present a proof of that theorem in the most interesting way. I'm going to do it with a game, but not that CSGO. Am I right, son? Door stuck! Door stuck! I'm not you! That the hex game. The hex game was invented by Danish mathematician Pete Hay. But the game was also reinvited by John Nash. Yes, that man. There is some controversy about the situation. I found it independently. But apart from its story, it's also an interesting game by its own theory. In the game, there is a board like this with edges for black and white. The aim is to connect two edges of the same color, either black or white. 
The Hex theory states that there are no ties in this game. It's simple to prove this theory. When we make such an incomplete path between two edges, the other paths will in the end connect two edges. When the game is played until all board is filled except for one piece, the last piece will finish the game and make a path between black or white. We are going to use this hex game to prove Brower's fixed point theory. To do this, let's draw our board and shape it like this. Then, we'll draw vectors in the middle of these hexagons. Each hexagon will fit in a square of size epsilon by epsilon. Now, it's time to classify our vectors. Up, down, right, and left. These will come into play. Vectors will be called right if they move at least epsilon to the right, left if they move left, and so on. Right and left are not connected. We can prove this using the reductio ad absurdum method. If we assume that they are adjacent and subtract the vectors when they are adjacent, we can see that their magnitude is greater than epsilon. What's wrong with this? You might say, why can't something like this happen? Then Poincare would be displeased with you because you are making the same mistake. I mentioned that this theory is valid for a continuous and defined function on a disk. Such a function should be uniformly continuous, as in this case, without a topological disk. Uniform continuity is stronger than continuity. This can be explained simply. The functions 1 divided by x and the square root of x are continuous in the interval 0 to infinity. But 1 divided by x is not uniformly continuous. The epsilon value should not touch this window. Now let's return to our situation. You can easily understand that when the difference between the functions is greater than epsilon, you can easily understand that it will be trapped in the window of uniform continuity. This is why right and left are not adjacent. For the same reason, up and down are also not adjacent. So, let's go back to start again. Now we have proven that there is always an option for Alice and Bob, where both sides are happy. Now, I want to delve into something philosophical. I think that a beautiful type of math is the connection between things that seem different. From afar, they look distinct, but when you delve into every part of them, you see that they are made of the same patterns. This concept has blown my mind. It's like magic. My motivation in this video is also to show you that magic, so you can perceive it everywhere too. Let's continue to be amazed by the beauty of magic. Yes, Alice and Bob. They want to calculate the point where both sides are happy. They truly desire that. You do too, right? This part is quite tricky. Note that Caleb Joseph Errol won the Nobel Prize in Economics for the theory of general equilibrium. We are going to dive into some topology and algebra. Let's go! Coming back to the edge word box, it's important for our work to find the points that will maximize utility. Let's take a simple example. When Alice has a total of two supplies. In our utility function example, Alice can choose one apple and one banana to maximize utility. You get the idea. Let's draw a line that includes all these points. The characteristic behavior of this line is that start and end are the origins of Alice and Bob. This can be understood intuitively. Then, it can go like this, but it's going to change with the values of alpha and beta. Let's calculate it for the specific alpha and beta values. Suppose that both people have cop Douglas utility. Let the total endowment of each good be 1, so that x2 equals 1 minus x1. That person's one's utility can be written as this, and two's utility is like this. That means derivative of utility curves of both persons are safe. So we are going to get some points with that equation. These points will make lines like that for different utility functions. Thus, solving for y, a point is on the contract curve for this equation. The contract curve for the cop douglas case depends on a single parameter. In our example, imagine that we got a contact curve like that. When we cut that plane from the line and glue like that. 
and glue the other edges like that. Now we have got a Mobius strip. And the edges of Mobius strip present all lines that maximize utility. To be clear, point maximize utility for both persons. Stop. He's going to say that we can map the edge of edge box to a circle that includes all our locations. But I didn't describe that circle well. A circle is equation of x square plus y square equals 1. When we define x square and y square as supply of Alice and Bob, so amount of supplies are conservated. But what makes that square you might say? That makes the selection of supplies. You can imagine that as if it's negative, that means it's banana and positive is for apple. There's also a good detail. You can see our allocations will be repeated in edge of Moby Strip when you follow it. You are also going to see that our circle has got same issue too. So I describe circle. I can let him explain rest. We can map our Mobius strip to the circle like that, that present all variations of distribution. But when we map our Mobius strip to a circle, Mobius strip will intersect in one point and that point will be our equilibrium point. And because of the topology of that strip, there is always going to be a point like that. Can you see how topological theorems are connected to each other like a web? We have touched upon numerous theorems and interesting facts, but what we have come from is Brouwer's Fixed Point Theorem. We have observed many reflections of that theory. It's truly amazing how a theory can have such a far-reaching implications. Every event in the universe can be defined as a function, and for this theorem, only precondition is continuity. In economics, sociology, physics, there is always continuous functions. I think that this theorem gives a good starting point for a lot of events in different fields. There is always equilibrium input. That's what makes this theorem beautiful. And that's what makes topology beautiful.